and welcome. My name is Eamon Killian. I've been doing a short set of tutorials on how to get started using IBM software. So welcome to tutorial 21. Um, tutorial 21 is a follow-on from tutorial 20. I was going to do it all as 20, but I ended up with nine parts to tutorial 20, so uh, I thought it about time to move forward a bit to tutorial 21. Um, so you could see these as addendums to tutorial 20. Um, 20 in 20 we covered, and if you haven't seen them, uh, it's probably worth viewing them before doing this. Although if you are already someone who is very familiar with IP tables, you won't need to uh, review tutorial 20. Um, Basically, it's a follow-on that we will be covering a little bit more on scripting and we're going to test everything that we built during tutorial 20 on an actual software virtual machine so that we can see how it actually works within software and what we need to do to change our machines. So what are we going to do? Well, I've already said we're going to continue from where we were. Specifically, we're going to do these things. First, we're going to create a machine from the command line uh, that, you know, the command line tool for software CLI that we installed way back in tutorial nine. Um, I'm going to take a slight tangent because I've written some utility scripts around the software CLI to make it slightly more usable from the point of view of like giving the use case there of a developer. So it's basically a wrapper around it that says, you know, how many machines do you want? Do you want them monthly? Do you want them hourly? Do, you know, it, a it asks all the pertinent questions from a shell script, and I'm going to stick that on GitHub as well, um, because it just means you don't have to remember the CLI command itself. Um, once the machine's up, we're going to install Git and clone uh, our IP table scripts. Then we're going to examine our interface and make the necessary changes, and then we're going to go through them one by one. Uh, I should point out, we are never going to run total lockdown, or actually in one of the bits, I might well uh, run it to show you how you get locked out completely from your machine. Um, and then we'll reload the OS again to get ourselves back in. Um, the other way, of course, getting back in is to go to the command line um, through the GUI. But to be honest, if it's a test machine and we're just testing stuff, it only takes about four or five, maybe ten minutes to reinstall the OS and you're back in again. Um, but it's good to, good for you to see, I guess, what Total Lockdown will do exactly what it says and lock you out completely. Um, we will have to enable VLAN spanning because I'm going to then test these scripts from another virtual machine within software and from the machine outside of software. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. And I guess uh, it just remains to say the scripts will be on GitHub and let's get going and uh, dive in and create the machine. We're ready to get going. Here I am on my software account. So I'm just going to go in and have a look at my device list. See what we've got in here. We've got one device. So I've got one device in Amsterdam. Um, if I go to network, because I just want to check this as well, VLAN, and I wanted to check spanning. Right, I'm going to turn spanning off, and that will take a few minutes to flow through. So that, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure spanning was off, because I want to show you the default from when you first go to your devices. Um, as you can see, we've got one device. So. I'm going to add another device, and to do that, I'm going to use the command line. So, if I bring up a new window, and I get myself into the new window, let's make the, uh, the readability of that a little bit better for you guys. In fact, I'll make it really, really better. So, I mentioned that I have created a script um, because you know using the um, using the software command that we checked out ages ago when we first installed it pip install the software uh, CLI we can do a hell of a lot of stuff from here so we can create machines delete machines etc and it's a really really excellent resource to have available um, so if I go SL um, VS whoops VS 
minus uh, create options. Whoops. I think it might be minus minus now. Let's ask the help. Create minus options. Okay. And even by my doing that, I keep getting this uh, security warning around the SSLs. Um, I must figure out what that is, but ignore that. It doesn't actually seem to change anything. And these are the create options you have available. Um, let me now make that slightly smaller again. See if I can get it more on one page. There we go. So you've got your OS, different OS choices you can make. Um, local disk options, SAN disk options, NIC options, etc. So all the options are there for you to be able to create a machine from the command line. So you can go SL, uh, VS, create, and it will then tell us it's looking for the OS and the image. And if you're not using it every day, whilst it is an absolutely fantastic resource to have available, if you're not using it every day, which I haven't been, uh, to create machines, and it may be a few weeks, a few months even, since you've been back to create more machines because you've set up auto-scaling already, so it just happens. Um, you know, you may not be fully au fait and fully understanding how to create the machines from the command line. So it's going to take you a few minutes to figure it out. So what I did instead was I decided um, I would go to uh, create a script. And if I go into... And yes, I know it's now 2015. Um, yes, there we are. And I have a software create machine script. So if I now run that, it comes up like this. Name for the new host. Well, we're going to test uh, IP tables, let's call it. Domain name. Let's go for the sassify.com. Hourly, that'll do. Uh, size of machine, I fixed on these three, one, two, and three. You could add more, of course. Um, so I'll say small. Um, CentOS, I'm quite happy with CentOS, 64-bit. Again, you can have more options in here. And then finally, Paris, you know, I've taken the EU ones um, and stuck it up that way. So, you know, what the hell, let's have this machine in there. Uh, Amsterdam pod 3. Confirm I want to create this machine. Yep, I certainly do. And that will now go away and create our machine. So this is coming back from the actual software CLI. So I'll say yes. Off it goes. Again, I'm getting this error. Um, don't quite know why. I'll fix that at some stage. And that will respond to me in a minute with the name of the machine. There we go. ID created. There's our machine. So whilst that's building, let's just go back in here and do a refresh of the page. Still not quite there. Another couple of minutes. Just give it a couple of more minutes and we should see our new machine being created. There it is. So that will now build. It's in the process there. We can check where it is. It's in cloud provisioning. So that'll take a couple of minutes and that machine will be back. So what we're going to do in the meanwhile is let's go and have a look at this shell script because I said I would, I would cover some shell scripting. So I'm just going to show you how that script is uh, pulled together and then I'll stick it up on GitHub so you can download it and change it to be what you need it to be. Um, and by then, the machine will be fully available. We can log in and do some IP tables. So while we're waiting for the virtual machine to be fully provisioned, I thought I'd show you that little script and how it got pulled together. So basically, it's a standard uh, bin bash script. And I've put my short description in here in the license, so feel free to grab it from uh, GitHub and do what you like. Um, I'm going to first set up some variables and I'm going to use these globally within the script. Um, 
it's not so much a global versus local uh, or function level thing, but you know, for the purposes of the best description, they're global variables. Uh, our small CPU is one, our small memory, etc. You can add more if you want. You could you could have an extra large uh, CPU and you know make that 16 cores, etc. So you can feel free to add more in there. Um, any functions we're defining, so here's our function, and it's a POSIX standard function. So I'm going to have a to confirm function, which is going to basically say confirm you want to do this, which we just saw a minute ago. Um, if we confirm yes or uppercase yes or lowercase, sorry, lowercase y or uppercase y, it will say I'm sending the command, and it will run the command, and the command is $arg, which gets built down below. Um, otherwise, it'll abort. So right the way through, you can decide, no, I'm going to get out of this. So I don't want to do it. Um, the rest of it really is just echoing out those nice little choice menus. So it's a very, very simple shell script that will, you know, this will test whether the actual variable exists. Um, if it doesn't, then it'll just keep asking and it'll loop around there. Um, same for the domain name. And you can see how easy it is to pull this all together. So again, you know, you can add more, you can take stuff out of it, you can fixate it for your developers on a certain format, you can basically manage everything within this and not ask them for any of the options and just make this about host name and uh, domain name. In fact, you could just make it about host name and say we're always going to have the same test dot software.com as the domain. So you can see there, it just runs through, it does the same thing over and over, and then eventually we have some case statements which will, dependent on the choice, set the actual OS, you can see here. And I got these straight from doing that create options, which is why I showed you the create options a minute ago. And in the end, once it's done all of that, it will build the command as $arg, or arg, yeah? and it will basically build that line, put in all the variable choices you've made, and your line is ready. Then it calls that function we looked at earlier to confirm, and the function will ask you yes, no, and it'll abort, or it will run this line. And it's that simple. So I'll stick that up, like I said, on GitHub, and you can play with that. I like it because it's a nice, simple, utility way of using the software command line interface and putting, putting a little bit more meat on the bare bones of the software CLI and making it a bit more usable. You can add, of course, other scripts to shut down a machine, stop a machine, etc., and use the command line for doing that too and build it up in the same way in a bin bash or a bin sh um, actual shell script. So it's a nice way of linking in. The other factor that it's good for in terms of having scripts like this, utility scripts, is of course, again, I know I keep harping on about it, is to, to put these scripts in a standard place so that you can run them with, from within a chef recipe um, or a puppet manifest, and you can actually run the command and get those commands run on virtual machines. Um, so... Use it for what, you know, use it if you want, um, change it, modify it. I just wanted to show a simple way of building scripts that could be very, very useful when you're working in the software environment. Let's move on to have a look at our virtual machine, which must be ready by now. Um, so let's go in and reload the page and see whether it's finally finished. Too. And it is. So there we go. We're ready to get going. We can go in here. We can find out our password and we can go and log on to that machine. So join me when I bring up my, uh, my shell and we'll enter part two.